Hey, how are you today? So if you haven't seen the latest blog post, it was about uh, using both sides of your brain, left side and right side. So one side is your creative side and one side is your logical thinking side. And so I was talking with somebody the other day and we were talking about, you know, how I can think through situations really quick and come up with some solid solutions and how that's a skill. And I started thinking, well, when, when did I start developing this skill? Cause I don't, I don't think it's something you're born with. I think it's something that um, maybe, maybe you have some skill towards it, but it's certainly something that I intentionally developed because years ago I had read that um, when you can think between both sides of your brain, the left side and the right side, and when there's a lot of communication between both sides, there's actual, they could measure the electrical activity between the two sides, between the two hemispheres of the brain. And so my research on the brain started like 30 something years ago. And I just always, you know, that fascinated me how the brain works and that continues to this day, which is why I'm doing the aroma freedom. So I started thinking back then, well, okay, so if I'm using the logical side of my brain, the article I had read said, if you can tap into the creative side at the same time, or you know, in close proximity while you're doing those two things and get them both working at the same time, that really helps. So I would do things like listen to um, recordings at the time it was cassette tapes. So I would listen to recordings of um, books and you know different things. Um, and then I would do something creative like artwork or something. So I had both hemispheres going on at the same time. But one of the things that I wrote about in the blog post was about a puzzle that I used to do. So I worked on computer help desk. I jumped from finance and doing bookkeeping and accounting work. I wasn't an accountant, but I worked in accounting departments. And so I, I wanted to switch from that to tech. So I switched over to tech support and that's how I started working. Hi, thanks for joining me today. So, um, so I switched over to tech. So while I was, I, my first job was computer help desk because I knew how to use Microsoft Office really well and they didn't have a Microsoft Office specialist on the help desk. So they hired me as their Microsoft Office person who could offer phone support. So while I would be on the phone stepping someone through how to fix their problem, I would do a puzzle and I actually, I still have the puzzle. This was like so many years ago. I lived in New Jersey. So this puzzle has traveled with me from New Jersey to Florida over here to Pennsylvania where I am now. So this is the puzzle that I used to do. And I still have the rubber band that holds it together and the little plastic top and everything. But I thought, how cool would it be to just show you guys this? So it's got these little plastic pieces. And I think now they have electronic puzzles like this called Tangram or something like that. So, but I love, so it's, there's something about the tactile nature of working with different things. So puzzles, like where you could actually physically touch it, um, they call it now going analog, where you could actually like write in a journal is different than typing, you know, or, or voice to text. So actually writing something out. So when I have something really important that I want to remember, I make sure to actually scribe it into um, a notebook and I have all different notebooks for all different things. Anyway, getting back to the puzzle. So this is the puzzle. So it has all of these little pieces. And so there's this little drawer. Where's the little drawer? I'll show you the drawer. So there's this little drawer that has these cards. And so the idea is that you take a card and look at the card. So you would have to take the card. And so, okay, so I got to take these pieces here and then put it together so it looks like that. Isn't that cool? So, and then on the flip side, it has the answer, but you know, you're not supposed to look at that. So, so you would have to take this and see it has no lines, but this, you know, these are different pieces. So you would have to, oh, look at that. There's the same one. <laughs> That's where it was left in the box. So this must be the last one that I did. So um, yeah, so you take this together and so you have to figure out, and there's all different ways it could fit. And the, the puzzles, they're all different cards, all different um, things that you put together. But it was so cool. There's, there's different ones like this one and this one. 
And so you got to take the shapes and figure out, okay, how would I put these shapes together to make this thing? So anyway, because I was doing something tactile in nature and I was doing something creative in nature at the same time that I was logically thinking through how to solve this computer problem, I was using both sides of the brain. And so that's my, I did the blog post because I was like, this is sort of like, now they call it like a hack or whatever, you know, um, but I just thought that was so cool, you know, because I intentionally developed using both both hemispheres of the brain at the same time. And, you know, I've done I've done things like that ever since, you know, so um, it, it helps you develop the skill of being able to um, size up situations and get in touch with like that gut feeling like I got this gut reaction and I know this will work, but, you know, I can't always explain and articulate how it will work but it's like i know this will work just yeah so yeah isn't that interesting so if you like puzzles or if you have any kind of um something like that that you could do i would recommend doing it um like i said as tactile more so than than digital when you want to be tapping both sides of the brain or while you're doing your artwork listening to an audiobook and I just discovered Audible. So it's so cool because what I'm finding out is, so I had a couple of Kindle books and I don't have a Kindle, but I have my phone and there's a Kindle app. So I have some paper books and then I would get the Kindle version because I want to highlight it and put notes and, and have it be searchable so I could find things quick. But then I started, um, I downloaded an Audible like a couple of years ago, the one book that I really liked because I wanted to be able to hear it and see it at the same time and highlight. So, but what I what I find is with the Audible, if the author is narrating the book, they start to ad lib in between. And it's like, because the one author was saying something in the Audible book that, yeah, you do both things too. So I, I was finding things being mentioned in the Audible book and I would be like, oh, I don't remember that. Let me go find that in the Kindle. And I would do a search. And I would look at the same chapter and I, I'd be like, but he didn't say that in the book, you know? So it's almost like, so if the book is narrated by a person other than the author, they read the book. But there's two books so far that I have found that the, the author is like ad-libbing as they go along. So they're, they're following like the outline of the book, but they're adding extra stuff or leaving some other stuff out. So yeah, it's kind of neat. So anyway, that's um, so if you're going to do something tactile like artwork, because I make cards and stuff, and then I listen to an audio book at the same time. So that's what I mean. I still do stuff like that. So if you're going to do something like that, you could do it that way. Or if you're doing something logical and you just can't figure out, you know, get all the pieces together, grab something um, tactile like a puzzle. So, yeah. So if you do research or if you Google it or look at, you know, things to do to develop both hemispheres of the brain and using it at the same time and any of that, um, you know, measuring the electrical activity between the two hemispheres, if you find anything, share it, because I would love to see like some more resor resources about it. I haven't had a chance to look into it lately. So I'm just sharing, you know, my experience and what has helped me. Um, and what I had had known from a while ago. So, but if you find anything, I would love to hear some comments and stuff. So hopefully you catch the blog. I'll leave the link um, in this video so you can see it if you didn't, if you didn't yet. And if you're not on my email list, go ahead to my website and um, either comment on the blog or um, grab something that's out there and that'll automatically bring you into my email list. And I usually mail them out on Thursdays. So um, next week, I'm starting a whole series on fear. I had posted it and then I pulled the post because I said, you know what, I want to add something about this. So I'm going to be doing a, a whole series on that. So um, stop by my website. Let me know what you think and share your resources here. So, oh, wow, Baltimore. I'd love to hear about that. I want to hear about the exhibition in Baltimore. Thank you for sharing that. All right. You guys have a great rest of your day. If it's evening by you, have a good night's sleep. Take care.